Hello students, today we are going to be learning Chapter 2, Lesson 7, which is about dilations. This is for my Math 8 class. As a reminder, you need to have out your spiral notebook and your RPJ. Go ahead and open up your spiral notebook to a clean page and label it 2.7 dilations at the top. Remember that you will need to pause the video and get caught up with what I am writing as we go through the notes today. Today's goal is to draw dilations in the coordinate plane. Before we start that, let's define what a dilation is. A dilation is a transformation in which a figure is made larger or smaller with respect to a point called the center of dilation. I have put the vocab words or vocab phrases in red for you. For example, let's say I had this capital block letter Y here, and it's a small y, and I want to make it bigger. What I can do is I can use this center of dilation and think about the lines that connect these two uh, points that are on my figure to the center. And I can create one that is bigger by using that information. And so now here I have my large letter Y. This is called a dilation because my new image became bigger than my previous image. So if you think back to chapter two, lesson five that we just previously did, we talked about when you have two shapes, one is smaller than the other, but in all other respects, they're the same. And if you remember, that is called similar. So these two figures are similar. And if you remember what that means, it means that the corresponding angles are equal and the corresponding sides are proportional. One more thing, uh, this point here is called the center of dilation, which is what we went over when we did our vocabulary word. Okay, one more thing that we need to know about, and this is especially important for when we start graphing, is something called the scale factor. The scale factor is found by looking at the lengths of two corresponding sides. So for example, this length here and this length here are corresponding. So let's say I told you that the smaller length was three units, whatever that is, three inches, three millimeters, and then this one out here was six. So our scale factor is the image length over the pre-image length. So in our case, that would be six over three, and we would always want to reduce. This means that in this case, our red bigger Y is two times bigger than our blue smaller Y. And we will use the scale factor when we graph on the coordinate plane, which we're going to do on the next page. Okay, so everybody should be on page 48 of your RPJ. The first set of questions says, tell whether the shaded figure is a dilation of the non-shaded figure. So let's take a look at number one. Remember that the definition is that the figure is made larger or smaller. And in this case, we definitely have a smaller figure and a larger figure. So I would say, yes, this is a dilation. Number two, uh, that does not look like a dilation at all. In fact, it's turned. Do you see how it's turned around? So I would say that no, this is actually a rotation. And lastly, in number three, this is very definitely one is bigger than the other, and they look to be the same shape otherwise. So yes, this is a dilation. Okay, let's take a look at the graphing. So in the graphing ones, it says the vertices of the figure are given draw the figure and its image after the dilation with the given scale factor and identify the type of dilation. So our first step is to graph the points that we are given. So let's start with A. So on A, we have negative two, two. So remember we start at the origin and the first point is on my x-axis. So I go down two on the x-axis. My second point is the y-axis. So I go up two 
So this is where it's negative 2, 2 live. My second point is 1, 2. So on my origin, I go over 1 and up 2. So this is point B. My third point is 1, negative 1. So we're going to go over 1 and down 1. So this is point C. So now it says to draw the figure and its image after the dilation with the given scale factor. So we did the first part. We drew the figure. Now we need to draw the image. Scale factor, for some reason, is usually goes by the, vari by the variable k. I'm not really sure where that came from, but it's pretty universal among all of the books th the, that I've taught from. So in this case, it says k equals 3. So what that means is that the scale factor equals 3. So if the scale factor is 3, what's going to happen to our triangle is it's going to get 3 times bigger in size. So now what we need to do is take a look at our original points and how we solve for this is we multiply each of our x and y by the scale factor. So I'm going to multiply uh, the negative 2 by 3 and this 2 by 3 and this by 3. Everything gets multiplied by 3 and that will give us our new points. So point A prime is going to be negative 2 times 3, which is negative 6, and 2 times 3, which is positive 6. So on my graph, I start at 0, 0. I go negative 6 and positive 6. So this will be my new A prime point. My B prime point will be uh, 1 times 3 is 3, 2 times 3 is 6. So my B prime point, need to put a prime there, is going to be at 3, 6. So I start at the origin go over 3 and up 6. So this will be my new B prime point. Lastly, my C prime point will be, uh, so let's write C prime, and then it's going to be 1 times 3, which is 3, and negative 1 times 3, which is negative 3. So over 1, 2, 3, down 1, 2, 3, so my new C prime point will be here. And there we have our large triangle, which is 3 times bigger than our bit smaller triangle, which was our pre-image. OK, let's book, go back at the instructions. The vertices of the figure are given. Draw the figure. We did that in blue. And its image after the dilation of the given scale factor. We did that in red. Now the last part says identify the type of dilation. So since this dilation got bigger, the mathematical term for that is enlargement. So when we identify, we would say enlargement. OK, let's take a look at number five. You go ahead and draw all four points on your own. Pause the video and see if you can do that, please. OK, here I have that done. Check your work. Now we need to draw the image after the given scale factor. In this case, our scale factor is 1 half. 1 half means that it's going to be 1 half the size, so it's going to get smaller this time. All right, let's take a look at D prime. So D prime. What we're going to do is multiply the 4 times 1 half. And basically, it just means you're taking half of 4. So half of 4 is 2. And then the other one, half of 2, is 1. So our D prime point is going to be 2 comma 1, which lives here. So that'll be my D prime point. OK, let's take a look at E prime. So E prime is going to be half of 4, half of 4 is 2, and then half of 8, half of 8 is 4. So E prime will be at 2 comma 4, which is here on your graph. F prime is going to be half of 8, which is 4, and another half of 8, which is also 4. So 4 comma 4 will be F prime. And so we'll put that on our graph right there. Lastly, we have g prime, so that's going to be half of 8, which is 4, half of 2, which is 1, so 4 comma 1, which is here, so that will be g prime. And so this is our smaller rectangle. It is half the size of the bigger rectangle here. One thing I want to point out to you is that it happened to be that these two images touched here on the number five and here on number four. That doesn't always happen. It just happened in this case. 
So if you're working on your problems for your concept practice and they are not touching, they're apart from each other, don't worry about it. You still probably have it correct as long as you're following the rules of multiplying the scale factor correctly by the numbers that you're given and also if you have correctly graphed your points. Our last step to number five is to say what type of dilation it is. Since it got smaller, this time it is called a reduction. Okay, that's it for today. We're going to skip number six at the bottom. Thanks for watching.